Welcome to the exam, Brother Terry. Thank you, sir. I'm honored. Honored to be here. So, what we're going to do here, for the purpose of the example, is to try to uh, give a positive light of men in our community. Um, there's no, there's not a lot of positive image of men on TV and the media, social yeah. media. You know, you see us bashed everywhere. Right. So here's Christian men. I believe you're a perfect example. <laughs> so, I appreciate that. Man. So to give I a positive light that. of men, I appreciate you interviewing me. So, uh, so you're married, right? Yes, you correct. Got, you got children? Yes, that's All right. correct. All right. Yes. So, um, now I'm not going to get too personal with your stuff. You oh, know. man, I'm, I'm pretty right. much transparent when okay. it comes down to, uh, first of all, ministry. Okay. Uh, and then when it's a, an opportunity for me to be able to encourage and inspire someone just through my life. And so I, I pretty much stay in, in, in you know, just transparent always, man. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, man. All right. So let's get started. Uh, first, you know, in, in society, I believe I believe society lost a lot of standards. Mm -hmm. um, if you saw some of our videos, me and Mike went out, and there's a lot yeah. of, of moral, what we call moral relativism. Right. Um, uh, there's everything subjective. Yeah. There's really no standard. Right. Anymore. So when I want to start off with you first, these first couple questions, is, uh, just get a baseline of standards, a Christian okay. standard. What is a Christian standard? So first question is, what is love? A lot of times in society, we're looking at, you know, uh, a society that doesn't really understand what that. So can you give yeah. me an example? What is love? What is love? Well, you know, as a Christian, you want to define it, you know, as the biblical definition defines, it says that, you know, love is God. Mm -hmm. But that still doesn't really give a good explanation of what love is. And so if I had to go deeper and just pull just from, you know, just from my my being, I, w I would have to say that love is is a, it's a list of things. But and I don't know if you can define it though. I really don't believe you can define love. I think love is defined by the things that one do in life. You know, how do you define love? You 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 define it by your your, your lifestyle. You define it by how you live. You define it by how you treat other people. You define yeah. it how um, you attack life. Yeah. You know? It's, so basically I heard you for a, for a moment say how you treat other people. Yeah. You know, like God's greatest commandment, love right. your neighbor. Right. Like and love yourself. Exactly. So right. would you define that as God's standard for love? I would, yeah, absolutely. That is God's standard of love to treat people. And and, and see, this is the thing about the Bible, though, man. Mm -hmm. The Bible's the Bible gives us just really a good foundation, but there's so much more to life mm -hmm. than what the Bible says. Yeah. So even when when Christ says that you know to love God and to love people, you love your neighbor as you love yourself. Mm -hmm. You, you have to go deeper and say, well, how do I love myself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because if you can't love yourself or if you have already determined it within yourself that your love for yourself is good enough, yeah. then, of course, that's going to be transpired on to the person that's, re that, that, you know, in terms of being reciprocal, mm -hmm. it's going to be this. You may not meet, re you still may not meet that standard of God's love yeah. if you still don't have enough love for yourself. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. yeah. Okay. All right. So another hard question. <laughs> what is a man? What is a man? Now, so I give you the, the urban definition of it. <laughs> you give me urban, biblical, yeah. any definition you want to give it. <laughs> what is a man? Wow, man. You know, um, for years, you know, even as a teenager, um, I remember seeing a, a, a quote uh, from a famous, famous man, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Mm -hmm. I was six. I remember reading it on a wall of of of, of one of my uh, one of my guy. It was a guy, in, uh in my neighborhood that we all looked up to, prominent black man, and uh, he had this quote on this on this wall, and this quote st stayed with me and still to this day. The quote says that the ultimate measure of a man. It's not where he stands in times of comfort and convenience, but where he stands in times of challenges and turmoil mm -hmm. in his life. You know, being able to still, you know, withstand those things, those attacks, the pressure of life. Yeah. You know, as you're growing older, you know, uh, 
teenagers, they, they grow older and they begin to start wondering, man, you know, life is hard. Life is hard. Like, man, you haven't even started, began to live yet. And yet, yeah. you know, life is hard because now you can't, you, you can't get down to the, you know, your, your, your party, yeah. you know, because it's two miles away. Yeah. You know, your parents used to take you. So now, you know, and now the responsibility of you getting there is on you. Yeah. So now life is hard. Yeah. No, man, life, life, the true measure of a man is how, how much can you bear? Yeah. How much can you bear? A lot of times I catch myself, and now that I'm a lot older, a lot wiser now, when certain things come up mm-hmm. with the car. Mm-hmm. With the kids, mm-hmm. you know, things you, you kind of have a calming sense about you as you grow <laughs> into being a man. Like right. that, you, say, you know, right. it, it usually it really doesn't bother you as much right. anymore. You know what I mean? <laughs> and that's key. What you said, man. There's a there's a calm about those things that come. You don't get all fragile up, man. You don't get all frustrated. You know, you mm-hmm. begin to say, okay such as life you know yeah. you begin to accept it as life these are these are the challenges of life this is life yeah. so as i've gone through the last challenge so will i go through this one yeah. and, and come out successful yeah. you know and if i don't get my heart's desire after going through the challenge i've still come out with something which is called experience yeah so i now i got experience on how to handle it even that much better you yeah. know so the next time it comes it hit me yeah, I got the experience now. Okay, so it didn't knock me completely over, you know. But I got the experience. Yeah. But where where does God come into that? You know, in Man, of- now now when when I think about God in all that, mm-hmm. that is God's now for me personally. That is that is definitely the anchor. Mm-hmm. You know, the old folks, you know, uh, this old song about you know God being the anchor. You know that you got got to make sure that God is your anchor. That anchor that holds, you know, well, God is definitely my anchor. So as I go through these challenges in life and I face them, I have to go back to my anchor, you know, and say, okay, God, I know I'm, I'm anchored in you. And when I get to this place where I can't do it, I know somehow, some way you won't get me through it. Yeah. You know, so he's my anchor, man. He's my foundation. I, I have to have something to go back to that I know works. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a formula. God is my formula. I know this formula works. He's that law, you know, the everlasting law that, that if, if these things line up, this is going to be the end result. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. All right. And my next question is, are fathers important? Fathers and men. Are they important? In 2018. Oh, now, now, now just, you know, for yeah, all the time, I'm yeah. talking about now. Are they important in 2018? Yeah, because it seems like you look in the media, you look on wow, TV, man. you know, we love our women, but it seems like we're getting kicked to the curb yeah. here a little bit. Man, I, I don't think men will ever lose their importance. I think the problem is they don't believe that anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, the men, they don't believe it. Some have not even been taught the importance of being a man. Yeah. So it's hard to be something that you've never been taught to be. Yeah. And I think as we look at 2018, young boys, they're not being taught what it is to be a man. They're not being taught the importance of a man. And yeah. So when they develop into that fully age group of what we call a man because you're 21 years old, yeah. you know, you're still just a boy in a man's body. Yeah. But your mentality is still, you know, your mentality still has to grow. And if no one has told you that you're important, yeah, yeah. you know, and you're important and that society depend, depends on you. I think that was part of the key to our success back in the past, man, that that the families, mm-hmm. they knew that everything was going to be OK as long as daddy said it was going to be OK. And, and daddy knew he had some importance in their life. If daddy said it's going to be okay, it's going to be okay. If the man of the house said it's going to be okay, don't worry about it. I got this. Man, the wife was at peace. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. the, the kids was at peace. They may, you know, they may have still kind of been nervous. But when dad said it was okay, it was going to be okay. Yeah. And then what prevailed was when it was okay. Yeah. You know, it just yeah. built it. Right now, there's no, there's no standard for the man to prove himself because he, he doesn't understand the importance of himself. So you're saying now. Um, the order of God, and that has been lost now. Yeah. So, of course, we know that um, if you were, at, for example, God is our Father in heaven. Right. right. And our Father's on earth, 
are kind of mm-hmm. like that representation right. of that relationship right. in heaven. Right. You know, so right. not only are we not getting a representation uh, here on earth <laughs> you know, of how the Father is, you we don't even, so how can we understand, you, you know, that relationship between God? You know, so let me, let me back that up. I think right. I kind of messed that up a little bit. What I'm saying is that it's important for us to have that order. You know, God first, right. and then that man, right. and then over his, right. over his wife. Again, of course, in balance, <laughs> in love, of right. course, you know. But if the men, like you're saying, if they don't, they don't know. So if they don't have that relationship with their earthly father, right. <laughs> they really don't know right. about that relationship with the right. heavenly father. Right. So because, hopefully, I, hopefully I cleared that up for the video. <laughs> good, man, because that, I mean, really, and if you don't understand uh, honor, and respect, which is what is it vertical? You know, the honor and respect that goes vertical, meaning your relationship with God, and that's really honoring God and understanding your respect. If you don't understand that, then it's hard to have that horizontal honor and respect that that should come towards you. Mm-hmm. You know, if you don't, if you can't operate that way, then how can you expect it to come this way? Yeah, yeah, of course. All right, so. We're going to move to some of the issues that, oh, that are in the, in the community <laughs> now. So um, we, we kind of delved in a little bit about mm-hmm. how society um, sees us in 2018. Yeah. So do you think it's positive or negative um, in terms of how men are portrayed in 2018? Positive or negative? I, I think, I think we are... I think there's a slow turn. Mm-hmm. I think people are now starting to generate more positive images because there is a, a lot of media and we're able to exert more positive images out there. Yes, majority of it is still negative, mm-hmm. but I think there's a turn because at one point we didn't have the power of, of, of social media. Mm-hmm. You know, now I think with the power of social media, now we're able to put, produce and, and project a whole lot more positive images because there are positive images out there. Mm-hmm. We just have not been able, didn't have the tools to really project them. Yeah. And of course, what the world would do would kind of like keep that positive image smeared and keep it covered so that we can always be stereotyped, you know, that this is what an average black man looks like. This is what an average black man does. But now we have the power of of, of media. Yeah. We can we can put that thing out there now yeah. and change it. So I believe we're we're turning. I believe 2018, 2018 is a is a beginning of a turning season for us. And how long that season will be, I mean, it could be many years. But I believe that we're not going backwards. I do believe we're going forward. Okay. Yeah. All right. So why is it important <laughs> for Christian men to be Christ's example? Why is it important for the Christian men to be an example here on earth? The first thing that comes to my mind, first word that comes to my mind is, is uh, hypocrite. Mm-hmm. Hypocrite. I, I think that if we lose the image of portraying to be something that we're not, then we can rebuild the image of being something that we ought to be. Meaning that being Christ-like, being a man of faith, being a man who stands for integrity, who stands for, uh, you know, I mean, there's a list of things when I think about a man, you know, integrity, honesty, uh, discipline, perseverance, patience, mm-hmm. you know, and then you can talk about the fruits of the spirit, yeah. you know, that, that's in the Bible. It, it's so important because how, how else we're, how... Where's the other, what other examples do we have? You know, what other examples are out there if we're not going to be the ones to do it? Mm -hmm. And if we're, if we're not being, we cannot be hypocritical in doing it though. The moment that we, that we're saying and we're preaching and we're teaching one thing and then we turn back around and say, do as I say, not as I do. Mm -hmm. We've lost you know, we've lost the attention, we've lost the respect, we've lost, I said there, mean, meaning all those that are watching us, mm-hmm. you know, young men, uh, young young girls, young ladies, you know, our wives, 
you know, we've lost all those people that have looked up to us and expect an example out of us. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, yeah, I, I'm just, there's a scripture in the Bible where I remember where, where the Bible was talking about, I look for a man, mm -hmm. you know, to stand in the gap. A man to be an example of what the first man should have been, which being Adam. You know, Adam was supposed to be the example here yeah. on earth. Yeah. And he had everything. And he had the relationship with God. And he had he had his wife. And he had responsibilities. And he had, he had you know, all that. And then he lost that. Yeah. And the same, and when, he, when a man loses all that, society around him falls apart. Yeah. And that society begins in his home, yeah. you know. It, it, it can begin falling apart as his workplace. Yeah. We we look at society as being a multiple, you know, multitude of people. But society could be, you know, just me and my son, you know. Mm -hmm. And I, if I damage that relationship or I damage that image that he's looking, that he he sees in me, and I damage that, I've just lost. I could I could lose a entire uh, another society yeah. because he goes off and, and creates his own family. Because it's got a butterfly. Effect. It's a butterfly domino yeah. effect, yeah. you know. So so we talked about the butterfly effect and the importance of being um, a Christian a man in your home. Right. You know, why it's important to right. have that uh, that order <clears throat> and mm -hmm. not to be a hypocrite. Right. Because if you you know if you mess up in your home, you know your son gets an example and it should spread. Like right. I said, butterfly. Right. So with you, can you explain to me how you've been a Christian example in your home, starting with your marriage? Wow. Well, Start with my marriage. My example has to start with me understanding who I am. Mm -hmm. It always begins with you, the, the core, the source. Um, I know that, and I, and I was listening to someone today talking about how, you know, when you come into a marriage that some people have this concept that you come into a marriage and you bring in 50% and then the other person's bringing 50% and that makes 100 mm -hmm. And that idea was is totally false. Really, you, if you're coming to a marriage, you have to already come into a marriage bringing a hundred percent of yourself, and and hopefully the person you're marrying is bringing a hundred percent, and those two shall become one flesh, yeah. and become one whole. And so this other person doesn't complete you; you are already complete. Mm -hmm. So with my marriage, I had to be in a place of completion already, meaning that. There had to be certain standards in my life that was already established. The first important standard was that I had to have, I had to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, and that, that a relationship that I was sure of. Mm -hmm. So not just knowing who Jesus Christ was, but I had to make sure that I I knew who He was in my life, and that He was the most important thing in my life. Mm -hmm. So even coming into a marriage, I had to understand. Or I I, I knew. That if I, and the other thing was I, I married a Christian woman, mm -hmm. so of course marrying a Christian woman, we're both coming together, and hopefully that there are certain things in that marriage that you both agree upon, mm -hmm. and that was something that me, uh, she and I agreed upon that number one God was the most important thing in our lives. Mm -hmm. That had to, I had to be consistent with that. Uh, I've been married uh, thirteen years, fourteen, fourteen years, oh, wow. thirteen or fourteen. Great <laughs> Thank you. And, and that, has, that out of all the things that has been consistent in our lives, that has been the most important and the most consistent thing, our relationship with Christ. So regardless of how many disagreements we may have, how many things we may not see eye to eye, the most important thing or concept in our marriage was God is always first. Mm -hmm. That's the example that I have to live. And then I look to God as, okay, God, who am I and what do you expect out of me? A lot of times we try to use our spouse and let them give us their expectations of who we should be. And then we try to live up to that. Mm -hmm. That's a false conception because a lot of times you're not going to meet their expectations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Most time you don't find that out until years into the marriage that you don't meet their expectations. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and then when you know there's an expectation and you don't reach that expectation then it it does create frustration, mm. you know, in the marriage. And so I came into the marriage understanding, and there's some things I learned along the way. I'm not going to say I came into it knowing and having all, 
all the answers. I came understanding that we were coming and we were still growing together. One thing that I learned and I grew in understanding was that my that God expects things out of me, and that is He who I has to who I have to please. Mm-hmm. One of the things that I understood that 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 when I tell my wife that I love her and I love her unconditionally, I have to really understand what does that mean. That mean how do I define that? I love you unconditionally. Well, mm-hmm. the only way I understand what that is is by knowing what it is that God gives me yeah. unconditional love. So He is the person I go to in terms of okay, God. How am I supposed to be? Who am I supposed to be? And how am I supposed to love my wife? And she gives me, he gives me that. And he sets the example. And, uh, and I go from there, you know, God, let me meet your expectations. And with God being as, as sincere as he is, being as patient as he is, being as loving as he is, mm-hmm. he's, he's comfortable enough to watch me grow. Whereas my wife, she may have expectations, but she may not have that patience. She may not have that 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 full understanding of of giving me time to grow. Uh, so I think the first important thing, man, is just really understanding that that my expectations, um, uh, in terms of who I'm supposed to be as far as a husband is, yeah. they come from God. They come from you know, whatever He expects me to be, and that's that's my that's my that's who I'm going to to to, to try to meet. That's the mark I have to I have to meet. Yeah, based on that standard we talked about earlier, to be in that order. Right. <laughs> back to that order yeah, again. Uh, and, that, and that standard is yes. so, so important. Right. All right. All right, Brother Terrence. So, thank you for the explanation about your um, being an example in your marriage. Yeah. I think that's going to help people out. Yeah. Appreciate that. So, now we're going to move on to um, how you're an example to your children. Mm. How you're a Christian example to your children. Right. Um, uh, how, how are you going about doing that? And um, kind of share it in a way to yeah. maybe help some people out. Yeah, I, you know what? It seems like most of the questions that you ask me, the thing that I keep coming, rever- the thing that I keep reverting back to, is uh, that word hypocrite, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's so it's such a strong, it's, it it could be it's such a strong word, man. And and, and if if you if we are if, if we're not being straight up and being real in our lives, I mean, being hypocritical. Man, it will push people away. Mm-hmm. And I think, not thing, I know in my life, uh, my children, before I completely sold out to Christ, you know, when I say completely sold out, I mean really committing my life to God. To God yeah. You know, not saying, well, you know, I love God, and, and but yet you come up with a bunch of excuses mm-hmm. of why you're still doing things, and then your children are watching you, and, and you try to give them an explanation. Well, it's not that, you know, I, I'm not saved. I just, you know, God knows I'm still working on some things. And so, you know, I, you know and you've given them really a, a, a bunch of garbage, you know, yeah. so that you can feel comfortable basically in your lifestyle, which really is not not acceptable in the eyesight of God. Yeah. And so what I've, what I've come to understand as I grow grow older and my children grow with me, one of the greatest things that I that I that I know happens is that they're watching me. Yeah. I don't know if you ever saw this. Um, it's it's a uh, depiction of, um, um, and I've seen it on Facebook, where it has this big old lion, mm-hmm. or t- yes, lion, and it has a cub. Yeah. And I think in the caption it says something like, uh, "Remember, someone's always watching you." Yeah. yeah. You know. Um, and I looked at that a couple of, about a year or so ago, and I realized that. The cub was looking up at the tiger, uh, at the lion rather, but at the same time, the lion was looking down at the cub. Yeah, yeah. And so I went back and I said, I wonder who's looking at who. Yeah, yeah. And the moral to the story, the truth is that we're both looking at each other. Yeah, you know, yeah. The child's looking at the father and the father's looking at the child. Uh, the father is looking at the child, realizing you're watching everything I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. And the child's looking at the father saying, yes, I have my eyes on you and yeah. you're my example. Yeah, yeah. And so in my, in my life, man, I had to learn that there were some things, some practices in my life that I, were not, I was not completely doing right. And my, my children, as they got older, they saw that. You know, and they saw that. But now the flip side of that is that they also saw the transformation of when I sold out and when I really became serious about living for God. Mm-hmm. Now, my relationship with my children, man, are, is awesome. To the utmost respect, 
Um, and we are at an age now where we talk, you know, yeah, yeah. men and women. We talk now. We talk like men and women. And, and they, you know, they, were, they, they, they have always been given room to speak their heart and give me, you know, give me their truth. Mm -hmm. As I am transparent to them, I always expected them to be able to be transparent with me. And now that they're young adults and, and adults now, they're able to tell me how they really feel and how they felt about certain things that they watched me do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, now that has also been a lesson for me, watching them and listening to them tell me what they saw. Mm -hmm. You know, like, wow, that was bad. And it reverts again, goes back to my relationship with God, mm -hmm. him setting the example for me. And so I've learned this, that if you love something, your your responsibility in loving it is not so much telling it how much you love it, but showing it how much you love it. Yeah. And that same thing with, with, with my children. I can't keep telling them how much I love them or tell them how much I love God, but yet doing everything that's contra contra contradictive yeah. to yeah. what God expects out of me. Yeah. Uh, God taught me this a long time ago, that if you love me, then you keep my commandments. Yeah. You yeah. do the things that I require of you. And there was a... Stop it there. Same with... That's, and that's that relationship with God too. If, <laughs> if, if you if if your children love you, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna follow you and listen to you. Right. So yeah, that that I'm just yeah. I just want to jump in that. It's so, yeah, it's, same thing. And it's 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 so parallel, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, people think because the world has gone to a place where they feel like they don't need God, and so therefore they can still raise the kids without it, and they can have good morals and good standards. Yeah, you can have good morals and good standards. There are good people in in in, in the world. And don't have anything to do with God. But I, be, I believe that there is there's, there's something about the relationship with God that one has to have that it, 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 it makes concrete the relationship. You know, yeah. it, 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 there, there's something that you can't, it's a force that can't be reckoned with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. You, can, you can have, you know, good moral standards, but when... As they say, the rubber meets the road. Mm -hmm. That relationship with God is the what really is going to count, yeah. you know, in those relationships with your children and with your wife. Yeah. Every every week, Monday, I send my children. We have this group text, you know, with all my children on it, mm -hmm. including their their wives uh, and their husbands. And I send out a group a group quote every every Monday morning. I send out a quote, and it's an inspirational quote. Not 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 always biblical. Mm -hmm. um, Famous, just famous people, famous quotes, but it's all encouraging and all inspiring, you know, and I believe that's my responsibility to them, that even though my, my children, my oldest child is 38 years old. Uh -huh. Yeah. And so, but I still, <laughs> I, I still believe that I have to sow into his life. Yeah. I have to sow into his marriage. I have to set the example for them because now they're in a place I, where I was 20 years ago, yeah. you know, but, it, but in the absence I didn't have a male figure in my life 20 years ago, yeah. so I didn't have an example. But my responsibility is to set that example for them, so they have a good positive example now, a good role model on how to be a good husband and how how to be a good father. But Chance, I heard you say something very important. <laughs> you said that you know you really didn't have that example, right? So right. Um, you're doing a great job with it now, but mm. how did you overcome not having that example, a male example? A fatherly example. Yeah, I, 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 this is the thing. Um, when I was 19, well, I was actually 18 when my girlfriend told me she was pregnant. Mm -hmm. um, I knew then that life was about to change for me. You know, uh, when he, he being my firstborn, when he came to the world, my whole perspective in life changed. And I felt a need, a desire, a commitment to, to be a man, you know? I was 19, 18 years old, 18 years old going on 19, and I felt a commitment to be a man and not having no idea what that meant. Yeah. I didn't know, no, I didn't have no idea, no clue what it meant to be a, a father. Mm -hmm. um, but I did have a couple positive male figures that that I would go to. You are you familiar with the Urban League? The Urban uh -huh. League is a, Urban League is a, is a, was a community organization that was there, always centered in, in basically in the, in, in, in the, the urban, the urban parts of the city yeah. for the, for black families, black communities. Um, 
And they had community programs, you know, after school programs that we could go to as, as black people, man, as black children, teenagers and go to. Well, there was a couple of black, you know, uh, older men that was there and they would talk to us, you know, and they would give us positive input. That one quote that I was telling you about mm -hmm. Dr. Martin Luther King, mm -hmm. you know, it came out of being involved in a group of like the Urban League. That's how I was I was being fed certain positive things in my life. So I didn't have a big full picture of what a father was, but I knew what a father wasn't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I used that, used, used that, knowing what a father wasn't, and I knew what I wanted to be to my son. Yeah. I told my girlfriend at the time, who I ended up marrying, uh, been divorced since then, remarried. So when I talk about my marriage, this is my second marriage. Okay. But I married the woman who birthed all my children into this world. I married her at 19 years old. Mm -hmm. At 19 years old, I had two children. I had, had, had my wife and two children. And I knew that being what no one was to me was what I needed to be to them. Mm -hmm. I told my, 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 my wife at that time that my children will not be raised on welfare. Yeah. Why not? Because I had that example in my life. My mother raised me on welfare and I saw her struggle and I saw when the 24th or 25th of the month came, mm -hmm. how she didn't know what she was going to do, how she was going to feed her children. Yeah. So I had the strongest desire to say that that was not going to happen to my, my children. They will never go through that. And so not even having a father example, but having uh, an, an understanding of what you did not want yeah, yeah. for your children. Yeah, and so I became the best father I could be knowing what I didn't want my children to have and knowing what I did want them to have. Yeah. Uh, my wife, ex-wife, when we got divorced, one of the things that she said to me, and it was very, very important, and I remember it. She said that um, she said you may not have been the best husband, and I wasn't because I didn't have I didn't commit to my I didn't commit my life to Christ by this time. Mm -hmm. She said you wasn't the best husband. She said, but you were the greatest father. Oh wow! You know, and that meant so much to me yeah. because that's where my life was because my children were the most important things in my in my world. They were they were the reason why I lived. I think most men, most fathers, fail today because their children are not the most important thing in their oh. life. Yeah. And when your children become the most important thing in your life, you'll be the best father you can be. You, 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 man, you'll do leaps and bounds. You, you, you'll sweep the floors. You'll clean toilets. You'll do whatever it needs to, you need to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When they become the most important thing in your life, man, you do whatever it is so that their lives can be better than yours. Yeah. But fathers have lost that. They've lost that. that, that now it's just about, and I'm not going to say now it's just about, the stigma is that a father does not love their children, mm. and the reason is because they were never loved. Yeah. You know, so they don't know how to love. And I, I dealt with that with, with with even in my life. And I began to ask God, I said, God, you know, I say that I love you, but I'm doing things that's contrary to what you're telling me to do. Yeah. yeah. Do I not love you? And I and I have to be honest with you. I felt and I heard in my spirit, and I say, I don't want to sound super spiritual, but, you know, you have a conscience. Mm -hmm. I, I've heard in my conscience, and I believe it was God speaking to, to, my, to my conscience, telling me it was not that I didn't love God, but I loved him based on how I was taught to love. Yeah, yeah. And so that was my concept of love. Yeah. So I was loving him based on how I was taught to love. Mm -hmm. God converted that love that I had into the love that he has for me. Yeah. And taught me how to love. Now when I look at my children, I can see how God loves us. Because I love my kid, my, my children, man, unconditionally now. Mm -hmm. One of my, my, my sons asked me the other day, he said, uh, like we were having a conversation. He said, uh, he said, Pop, he said, I really appreciate you. And I really appreciate the fact that, that you're, actually, let me be completely honest, he's my stepson mm -hmm. from this current marriage. Okay. He's my stepson, he's 22, he's 22 years old. And he said, Pop T, he said, I really appreciate you. And I really look, I really appreciate what you've done to me and, and in, my, in my life. He said, I really believe that if I came home and, for example, told you that I was gay, that you would still love me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I, that, that, that was, you know, one of the greatest things that a son could ever say to his father. Because now you understand when the children understand yeah. how much you love them. Yeah, yeah. 
it means the world, you know. And a lot of times, yeah, yeah, the godly love, yeah, godly love. Right. Yeah, yeah, godly <laughs> love. And I told him, I said, "Son, you're absolutely correct." Yeah. I said, "I don't have to condone your lifestyle or condone the things you do, but I will always love you unconditionally. Mm -hmm. You yeah. won't ever have to worry about that." Yeah, now, this is my stepson. Yeah. You know, this is not even my biological yeah, son. Yeah, yeah. But when I married his mom, mm -hmm. I was in a good place with God. Yeah, yeah. You know, and my love that God taught me how to love. I was able to trans, you know, trans, uh, uh, transition that same love onto him, you know. That butterfly effect. Butterfly, yeah, yeah, butterfly yeah. effect. Yeah, you're gonna remember that, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's yeah. Gonna be that, that example that you said, yeah. you know, he's gonna, he's gonna, the most definitely. And I, and I told him, I said, son, I said, if you decide to marry a woman who already have children, I said, you know what, you're older than right. Mm -hmm. He said, yeah, Papa T, I do. I know what I owe them. Yeah. He said, no doubt. I know what I owe them. So it's about setting the example. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. setting the example, a positive example, being a positive image so that when they are old, they will not walk away from you, you know? That's a perfect uh, inroad to my last question <laughs> about legacy. Legacy. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's how, that's why all this is important. Yeah. You know, love your neighbor, loving, you know, uh, loving that order of God, yeah. being that fatherly example. And yeah. when you do all that, you leave a legacy. You leave a legacy. Yeah. So you can you go into that and why that's important to Christian? Man. Leave Man. a legacy. And it's, it's, it's ironic that you would bring that up because one of the things I'm working on now, I have at now in, in my life, I have 10 grandchildren. Oh, man. And, um, if you include my, my children and their spouses, that's eight adults. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you have me and my wife. Um, all I, all I, all I keep talking about now is legacy, legacy, and, I, and that's all I've been talking about lately. And I think there's a certain you know time in a man's life where, uh, when and again we're talking about the true image of man. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. when a, there's a there's a time in a man's life yeah. where he becomes uh, uh, concerned about his legacy. Yeah. You know, what are people going to say about me? Not at the day of my funeral, but years after I'm gone, yeah. that's legacy. Yeah. You know, what are they going to remember years after I'm gone? What are they going to, what, what impact will, will I have made in the lives of my children and my children's children okay. years after I'm gone? And so right now, my big concern right now, my biggest concern is legacy. Mm. And I was mentioning um, one of the things I did with my oldest sons is I, I took them to Africa, took them to Kenya. Um, it's a trip that they will remember for the rest of their lives. Wow. Um, this this was like over uh, ten years ago. Oh wow! Uh, now those same sons, my sons, now they have children, and they're sharing these stories with their children. Dad took me to Africa. And now I've got to take you to Africa. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's as yeah, an yeah. image. You know, there's yeah. something we build. Our, our legacy is, is it has a lot to do with building that image and building building vision for our children. Yeah. Um, the next big thing that I'm doing, I, I, I have ten grandchildren, and I have uh, with my 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 with my children and their spouses, uh, meaning my my my. Um, uh, daughter-in-laws and my son-in-laws, mm. all of them being married, there's eight of them, and me and my wife, I am planning a trip to Puerto Rico. And I'm, I, I told my children, I said, I'm paying for all of my grandchildren to go to Puerto Rico. I said, my, I have one thing on my bucket list, and that's to take all my children to, to Puerto Rico. Now, you all got to pay for your own ticket, but I'm paying for my children, mm. and I'm taking care of all the accommodations. But we're going to go to, go to Puerto Rico. You know, like, Dad, why are you doing that? Because I want to leave a legacy. Mm -hmm. I want to leave something now for my grandchildren to remember their grandfather. Mm -hmm. and, and, and when you do something like that and you get all of them down, the first thing is that they've never all been in the same place at one time. Oh, wow. Ten grandchildren, never been in the same place at one time. I'll be the first to be able to do that. Yeah. So that, that right there is, is big and special in the lives of my children mm -hmm. because this is... You know the the the, the patriarch. Yeah. You know, patriarch. You know, made a way for all of his children and grandchildren to get together in one home. And then while we're there, man, there's so many things that we can do together. Mm -hmm. 
you remember, you know, back in the day, that's what they used to do, man. They would get together, all the whole family, doing family yeah. reunions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why family reunions were so big. Yeah. Because yeah. the families would get together, and they would talk about their history, yeah, and yeah. they talk about their future. Oh, yeah. You know, they talk about the history, they talk about the present state, and they talk about their future. I actually got one coming up this July. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, so, and that's something that we can't, we can't dis dis uh, uh, dismiss yeah. in the lives, of, especially in black lives, man. Yeah. You know, and black lives, and, and we start dismissing that out of it and say that that's, that's not important anymore. You're going to lose the legacy yeah. of being able, someone being able to say, you know, well, who was Papa T? That's what my grandchildren call yeah. me. You know, who was Papa T, mama? You know, I don't want them to ever have to say that, who yeah. was Papa T. Yeah. I want to do like Abraham did, man, set his children down and begin to tell them who God is, yeah. you yeah. know, and, who, and why we serve the God that we do. Yeah. And that's something, the thing that I did with my children. I always in, instilled in them why I serve God. Yeah. And one of my prayers, and I tell them this, one of my prayers is that I, my prayer for you guys is that you get to know God like I do. Yeah. Wow. And that's legacy, man, so that they can pass that on to their children. Yeah. Most important thing in my, to me is that they have a confirmed and firm relationship with God yeah. so that they can pass that on to their children because I believe in that. Their success, man. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, hey, beautiful. Hey, Thank man, you so I much. enjoyed this, man. Man, this is a great example <laughs> to, to our young men and uh, fathers and uh, just young men and yeah. fathers to be, yeah. you know, just wanna <laughs> and eliminate... even older men, you know. Hey, right, man, know, it's just, it, it's wanna, a great we want to eliminate excuses of why yeah. you can't do, yeah. you know, why you can't be a good dad. Yeah. Eliminate those excuses. Why you can't be a good father? Yeah. Eliminate it, man. Come on. I tell my kids this. It's another quote. Mm -hmm. Excuses are tools of incompetence. Mm -hmm. They build monuments of nothing. Those that specialize in them seldom succeed in anything. Oh, it's deep. Excuses <laughs> are tools of incompetence. <laughs> they build monuments of nothing. Those that specialize in them seldom succeed in anything. Wow. So I taught my children that, man, as a young age. Don't give me no excuses. Yeah. Now, I understand that there's, 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 there are reasons. Mm -hmm. But I don't want your excuses. Yeah. Don't give me an excuse. There we go. Yeah. All right, bro. Brother Terrence, thank you so much. <laughs> Bless you, man. It. I enjoy it, man. All I'm right. honored, man. Right. Hey, guys, keep subscribe. Yeah. Um, keep tuning in. We're gonna have some more videos, and thank you for tuning in to the example.